So, so far what we covered yesterday, let's recap quickly. So we covered VPC and the subnets, internet gateway and route tables, right? Yesterday we covered these, these things. So we still need to cover a few things here. Elastic IPs we'll see later on, but let's understand first what is security group. <coughs> Why you need a security group? Let's understand first. AWS security group. Security group acts as a virtual firewall for your instance to control inbound outbound traffic. When you launch an instance in VPC, you can assign up to five security groups to the instance security group act as the instance level not this subnet level <coughs> therefore therefore each instance in a subnet in your vpc can be assigned to different set of security groups okay so what it says let's let me <clears throat> let me quickly draw a small picture. Imagine this is your VPC. I'm not going to <clears throat> draw the availability zones and stuff. Imagine you have three subnets, right? What we created yesterday. We have three subnets okay and within the subnet you can place your vm say if i want to place a vm i can place the vm anywhere like this any inside the subnet <coughs> and you have your internet gateway okay and if a request came in have your route table right route table it will decide whether you need to Route table has the information about where to send. Submit one, two, three. Okay, so whatever the request that you have sent, it reached here. So imagine this is one Windows VM and you're trying to access it from outside. How you access it? Okay. So, request came to here. Then, there is one more component called should not represent this in a subnet, but yeah, let me represent like this. One more component called security group. Okay, security group will act as a firewall for this VM. Means, can you tell me on which port the Windows Server will work or which port Windows Server will function? Any idea? 3389. 3389. Okay, so by default, Windows works on 3389 and Linux works on 22 right so once it reaches the security group security group must be allowed with inbound traffic 3389 
okay means it is allowed in the security group then only the request will pass to windows server otherwise it will be blocked at security group level okay this is the basic purpose of security group it will keep on monitoring the request and it will have all the allowed ports in the list so if the request came in it will check via which port this request is going so this is going via 1446 okay fine 1446 is allowed in my list no then block it if the if the specified port is allowed or if the required port is already allowed in the list then it it will allow the request to go inside otherwise it will block at the entry gate this is like more of more of your security check it will keep on checking if if everything is okay then it is it will allow otherwise you will be denied similarly similarly when the request came in if the, when, the, when the request came in it will check what is allowed and what is not allowed there is a whitelist white list of ports or white list of things I'll show you how we can write these firewall rules and stuff in the security group okay clear on this any questions fine so let me go back to the yesterday's example this one okay so what is the IP range that we gave 10.1 right so back to this now I have one VPC right <clears throat> three subnets and the net gateway is already created the route table is already created let's go ahead and create a security group where you will create search for VPC VPC it is already created yesterday we created three subnets route table and all the three subnets are associated with this route table internet gateway attached to VPC fine and elastic IPs I'll, I'll, uh, I'll explain later on when we when we need the elastic IP okay so security groups network ACLs I will test it separately <laughs> Okay, how, how I can explain the network secure network ACLs and the security group look at this picture you have the metal you have the metal scanner right still a security is scanning it security is manually scanning it so why you need both okay fine so treat this as a not visible right so treat this as a
nuestro KCL entre DCC Security Group. Right? So we'll explain nuestro KCL later on. You can, you can control it <coughs> two places, but still, people are using security groups more. So by default, you'll see the security group gets created. I don't want to use the default one. What I'll do is I'll create a manual security group. Under VPC, just give some description, that's it, okay? Close. Okay, security group has been created. So go to security group, inbound rules, there's nothing. So you need to add inbound rules. ICMP means ping from where anywhere anywhere the ping must work okay another one I said RDP RDP double three eight nine from where see anywhere you should not <coughs> put this anywhere everywhere please be careful when you are updating source anywhere fine for now just for testing I have added both the interests so that was security <coughs> sorry security group has been created and allowed with few rules. So what is next? So we need to create instance and test it. Let's see how to. The VPC part is done. There's nothing to do on the VPC. I will discuss a couple of other points there. So a lot of other stuff in the VPC part. I will discuss one by one when we're, when you're doing the other testing. Okay, so go to services EC2 if you want to create the instance. Instances. Just a second. Go to key pairs. Want to delete all the key pairs. <coughs> Gone. So instances launch instance. Okay, you'll see a lot of these images. So which one I want to deploy? Deploy Windows 2019 base image. Select and what's the size? As I said, T2 micro with one CPU, one GB RAM is free for 12 months. Okay, select that. Next, how many instances that you want to launch? Only one server. Okay, and spot instance we'll discuss later network under which specified VPC and you have three subnets which subnet you want to use it let's put it on web subnet web or let's put it on DB subnet okay DB subnet and you want the public IP because if you look at the picture uh, 
what we have assigned so far 10.1.0.0 slash 16 and for this what is the IP range we decided 10.1.1.0 slash 24 for this 10.1.2.0 slash 25 and for this something like this right so I gave three different subnets now I'm placing VM in this subnet if you want we can place it here you can place it here we can place it here okay, right you select any of this but if you want to connect to this any of these VMs you should have one public IP. Public IP, if you, if you want to access your machine over the internet, you need a public IP. If you want to access the machine internally, you, you, you are okay to manage over the private network. Okay, now I want to access it from my home. So I need a public IP to access. So who will give the public IP? AWS will allocate the public IP. So whenever you access the public IP, you have a list of public IPs maintained by AWS and it will automatically allocate one IP to your machine. So when you are accessing it from your home, it hits the gateway. <coughs> Gateway will check what is the public IP and Gateway will send it to respective private IP. It works based on some natting, natting functionality that we'll discuss later on. But now what I need, I need public IP enable it. Okay, placement groups will discuss later on, capacity reservations, domains and stuff. So here you'll see the machine will be in so and so subnet. But you want to assign a manual IP, or it's fine if the system is assigned the dynamic IP. I'm fine with the dynamic IP. I won't assign any manual IP. Static IP. Next. By default, you'll get some 30 GB storage for your operating system. Okay. You want to add a tag so like this you can add the tags to the machine so if someone want to identify or someone want to notify you something like this okay you can mention so that the tags will be displayed if someone want to contact or someone want to check they can easily identify the owner and easily contact assign the security group select the security group which we have already created this one Right, the manually created one. As a view, if you look at the system configuration, Windows 2019 T2 Micro, it's a size, and it is using the security group what we have created, and the, these ports are already allowed, <coughs> and the instance details under under the subnet and IP will be automatically assigned 30 GB if you want additional storage we can assign additional storage that we will see later on and 
these are the few tags that we assign just if you just click on launch it will ask you to create a key pair that's fine have we have we provided any username and password to the aws machine so far anywhere if you check up no we did not so in azure by default it will ask you to assign a username and password while deploying the instance but in aws it is not the case so when you click on launch it is asking you to create a key pair <coughs> what's happening <coughs> just escape launch a key pair consists of public key that aws stores and a private key that as a customer we store it together they allow you to connect to your instance securely for windows the private key is required to obtain the password and for linux private key file allow you to securely ssh okay so there's a key pair concept here so what you need to do is you need to create a new key pair okay AWS. Just <clears throat> give the key pair name and download the key pair. So you'll get some M key. This is your private key. Okay. And public key is already saved with AWS. So if you supply this private key, it will validate along with the public key. If the hash values are matched, then it will allow you to log in. If it is a Linux server, if it is a Windows server, okay, you, you supply the same private key and it will match the hash values and it will check out the password for you. Fine, just click on launch instance. Okay, so your instance has, has been now initiated. View instances, you'll see started deploying the machine and see there's a public dns how we got it remember yesterday's class when we are discussing about vpc after creating the vpc you go to edit settings and edit dns host names check mark so if you enable the check mark then only you will see the host names will be resolved otherwise this this column is empty you will not see this column and you got the this is system generated instance id server is already up and running windows 2019 server i'm talking about and public ip private ip right private ip is also automatically assigned and public ip is also automatically assigned <laughs> What else we have? Yes, that's it. So, a demo of M1. <laughs> Is there any username and password? Nothing, right? So, what I have to do? I have to go to Actions, get the Windows password. So, if I click on Windows password, it is saying you have to wait for at least four minutes after you deploy the VM. So. Just wait. Meanwhile, you see short folder. This is a key. It's a private key where you'll use to log in into your Linux machine, or you can use the same key. By the way, let me show you something different. I'll, I'll launch one more instance. This time, I will deploy Linux, right? Same T2 micro. Can I put, the sa put this in the same DB subnet? Yes, I can put in the DB subnet. Do I need a public IP? Do I need a public IP? 
or not so this time i want i want to use the public ip let's see how we can log in okay and next add storage by default linux comes with 8 gb disk and windows comes with 30 gb disk next if you want you can add the tags i'm not going to add the tags now select the security group this time select the same security group but linux there is no ports mentioned here we will mention the ports later on so if you see you are <coughs> you'll not be able to connect to the instance port 22 doesn't have mentioned in the security group so we need to allow it okay fine continue right so just launch the instance are you going to create a new key pair or you want to use the existing key pair i want to use the existing key pair only fine launch the instance then you will not get the key pair once again you already have the key pair use the same key pair log into windows and use the same key pair login into linux but remember there is a tricky part here so i have deployed one more machine here which one linux but for this windows machine i have assigned public ip public ip i have assigned for this linux machine there is no public ip only private ip i have allowed so directly from internet you will not be able to connect with linux but there is a way <clears throat> once you log into the windows server inside the windows server you can connect to the linux server because both are in the same subnet both has the same private ip right once i log into the windows server from inside the windows server will you be able to log into linux server possible so for linux server you won't require any public ip let's test this as well okay so go to instances filter it out sorry linux vm1 if you look at for linux vm only private ip got allocated no public ip no dns name nothing only private ip right so both the servers are up and running but for linux server we'll add the security rules later on so windows server go to windows server select get the password now it is asking for private key okay select the private key which we have downloaded this one right decrypt the password now we'll see password has been successfully decrypted we recommend that you change your default password if a default password is changed it cannot be retrieved through the tool it is important that you should remember so this is the username and the password copy the password and put it on this is password so how to access the machine still see copy this name connect administrator and what's the password this is the password right the server Okay, once it's logged in, let's see. Okay, so just open the command prompt. What is the Linux machine private IP? Close Linux machine. What is the private IP? 
this is the Linux machine private IP. So both both the machines are on same subnet. So they should ping. See, Linux machine is pinging. <clears throat> so how to access? I need put this session. So let me See, okay, program files. This one, just copy it and paste it here. Okay, what else I need? I need this private key. this private key also needed just copy it put it on desktop without the private key will not be able to access it fine open put the session 10 dot 1 dot 2 dot 180 4 184 right so that's IP the default username is ec2 hyphen user is the default username for Linux remember okay and you need to supply the key right where is this key here go to SSH authentication authentication private key file for authentication browse desktop file let's see open now you'll see you will get a timeout any reason why why we get the timeout any reason see timeout because what what alone because if you go back to the picture, I said for every server, there is a security group which has the list of ports. So if the port is allowed, then you will be able to access the machine. If the port is not allowed, then you will get packet dropped. So imagine this is one machine. It must connect with one of the security group. Okay. Does it have a security group or not? Let's check. Security group. It has a security group. Okay, Linux machine, security group. This has a security group. This is the security group, right? But this security group doesn't have any Linux port mentioned here. So you need to edit inbound rules, add rule, which rule? SSH add port 22 from anywhere save it okay so rule has been modified successfully now try once again see it's working now Hmm, so I need to convert this. Let me do one thing. I need to convert the PEM file to PPK file. So, softwares. I need putty gen open or run as administrator. Okay, so load. 
from where I need to load the private key. Loads import okay. So if you want to put the password, you can put the password, otherwise, you can save the key. You can save the key. What is this? March 20. Then close. You will see there is one more file called private key. PPK. Just copy this key and paste it here. Close. Now click on. IP 10.1.2.184. So what I did, I have a private key. I need to convert that into PPK file. How to convert? I've shown you using Putigen. CT user at the red. <coughs> IP address and go to authentication. Browse. Now you'll see PPK file. Click open, see directly logged in without any password. Okay, so what we did so far, let me go back to the picture. From my home, I've connected to the Windows server over the public IP. Once I logged into the machine, inside that machine, I logged into the Linux machine over the private. This connection is via public and this connection is via private. Understand the difference? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. You got the difference between the private and public IP and how you access yes, the machines, machines over the internet and how you access the machines over internal network within the subnet. Okay. If, my question is, if I place any VM here, okay, will this, will you be able to connect to this VM as well? over the private network or not? No, I think no. It's possible. Let's do it very quickly. Instance, what is the, I'll, I'll deploy one more Linux instance, right? Linux. Now I'll put it on app subnet, right? So far, all the machines are in DB subnet. This time, I'll put it on app subnet or put it on web subnet. Let's put it on web subnet. Means, I'll put the VM here. So, from this Windows machine, will you be able to access this machine or not? Okay. I don't want any public IP because I want to access it over the private. I don't want to add any tags now. Just test, assign the security group, which we have created, review, and simply launch it. Use the same private key, launch. Okay, so go to instances. You will see machine is already created. And what is IP? 1.183. Ping. The machine is running. See, it's working. 
okay it's working man you can connect 1.183 browse the same private key okay see it's working it is running on a subnet web subnet you want you can check subnet web subnet this machine is running on web subnet and the windows server is running on db subnet so within the vpc within the vpc you create one two three and so on n number of subnets those machines will talk to each other you can restrict if you don't want to allow you can you have a network security group, sorry security group right okay you have a security group so you can block the port so this server will not touch this server you can control it but by default these three subnets are having internal connectivity clear any questions up to this yesterday's session and today's session Madhuri, are you there? Hello. Please wake up, everyone. Uh, your your voice is not audible. It's fine. So let's discuss further. <clears throat> now you understand what we did so far. We are we are in East US. I have created one VPC and I've created I've created three subnets, but I never placed the VMs in second subnet. Let's imagine I have two subnets or let's say three subnets. I have one internet gateway, right? And request came in, goes to respective subnets. Inside the subnet, I have one Linux VM here, and I have one Windows. And Linux machine we tested a couple of things I said for every at every instance level you can have security group I said I haven't created many security groups I have created only one security group inside the VPC and I connected to this and I told every machine please follow me I told every machine please follow me or please follow my rules if i said allowed then you will get the request if i said denied then you won't get the request this is what security group says and it has a, I'm, I'm not mentioning about tables and all okay it is all in the back end imagine subnet one two three is yes. vpc one what is the IP range? What is the IP range? 10.1.0.0 class 16. Now, my requirement is I want to create one more VPC. And if I create one more VPC, means you have to create a few more subnets as well. Okay, one more subnet. And I have one more gateway VPC two so VPC two can I use different IP range one seventy two dot sixteen dot zero dot zero slash sixteen acceptable or not acceptable?
we can create okay now i'll place one vm here and i'll place one vm here so by default these two will talk to each other this is what we tested here already right it is also acceptable now i want to send some data from here to here imagine this machine has a ip 172.16.1.189 and this machine has a ip called 10.1.1.183 right so i want to send some data from this machine to this machine then how you can send imagine both the machines are on us sorry us east one both the vpcs are created in us east one Understand the question first. We need to create some uh, rule, means a uh, internet gateway. For internet the gateways are. Internet gateways are there. Internet gateways are there. Their responsibility is accepting the request over the internet. Not only. Madhuri? First of all, tell me is it possible or not possible? Communication between two different VPCs is straight away. It is possible or we need to do some tweaking. No, it is possible. We can uh, do this. Uh, using uh, some uh, changes in networking. Sorry. Using what you said? Using a uh, networking part, we can do this. Yes, we are, we are discussing the networking part only. Uh, we are just trying to understand how that was set up. And if, if you want to use it in your real time, how you can set up this in this kind of stuff in your customer environment. Okay, so remember by default, this VPC and this VPC are logically separated. VPC is logical boundary, right? So by default, they cannot talk to each other. Means if you have a 500 VMs here, these 500 VMs will go via this internet gateway. Okay, and you have some 200 VMs inside this VPC. These 200 will go via this internet gateway. Okay, so if you want to exchange some data or if you want to talk to the machine which is sitting on the other VPC, this way is possible or the internet but i said both are sitting on the same region on the same region in the sense in the same building but still you are sending the data to internet what is the reason because if the if the machines are sitting in two different locations geographically one is in us another one is in uk or something see one is in north virginia Another one is in somewhere Europe. Then I can understand we should send this request over the internet and to access it. But both are sitting on the both the machines are sitting on the same building. Okay, so there is a possible way which you call it as VPC pairing, just like your VNet pairing in AWS also 
you have to perform VPC pairing. This we will do it tomorrow. Understand? Yes. That we will test it tomorrow. So we'll stop here. So any questions? So what we covered, just quickly recap. Elastic IPs, we used it, but I haven't explained how that functions and how that one. This we'll discuss later on. ACLs, we'll test it later on, but security groups we created and we tested. Network connectivity between subnets. What kind of testing we did? Within VPC, okay. If you are, if you have two VMs in the same subnet and you have VMs in a different subnet over the private network, how you can access it, and over the public net, public network from your home, how you can access it, and what is traditionally what what we discussed, okay. Key pairs, mandatory, so. These are the few things we discussed. Clear? So let me clear this off. Tomorrow, what we will do is we'll see VPC pairing tomorrow. Okay, so let me stop here.